So for this particular example, we will shift A, insert a cylinder. We'll just delete the top faces and we'll just control R, roll some loops in here. We'll select all the geometry, press space and type in poke to poke the faces and then press Alt J to requad it, which will give us a redirection. From here, we can add a subdivision and then we can click on cloth. If we go under cloth, now in the floater, if you scroll over to parameters, there'll be a little gentler to transitions compared to previously. Previously, they were a little bit harsh. Instead, if you use shift, you'll notice that I'm now scrolling over whole numbers, but the general shift scroll experience will be a lot gentler. So you're able to find those fine values without having to hold down additional keys. You'll also be able to get in and do the same thing on the shrink side as well. This has been adjusted. So now I can shift scroll in order to roll it at an accelerated rate, or I can just roll it gently to have a more gentle cloth experience. Of course, keep in mind that when it comes to using hops cloth, that the moment that you use it, it, it creates a V group based on the boundaries of the shape. If you're unclear on what the boundaries of your shape is, just going under select and select loops will mark these as a boundary loop. And so if we were to jump over into weight paint mode, we can see that on the first frame, that our weight groups are set up to this. And this is what prevents our cloth from actually falling to the ground. Of course, weight paint will break down a little bit when it comes to cloth. And just to make it look better, we'll put a subdivision at the end and allow it to set smooth. And we could even, at this point, jump back into cloth, lower the pressure till we get something a little more reasonable and expand on the shrink ever so gently, depending on what level we want the cloth to exponentially add to. And then of course, if you want it to reset with every setting change, you can still do that by turning on the reset button. And then every time you scroll to change a parameter, the cloth simulation will start over. For this, we'll choose apply, which means that whenever this applies, it will apply any modifiers before the cloth up to the cloth, including the cloth. So whenever I click the checkbox, the only modifier that will remain will be subdivision. So we'll get it at a frame that we like, click apply, and there we are left with our subdivision, and this is our cloth result. So we still have flipped quad geometry, but now shaped like a cloth pattern, and we can go from there just getting more random with the shapes. But with that, just wanted to show you that there's a new interface improvement to allow for smoother scrolling. Also in closing, when it comes to cloth, it's important to note that sharp markings will also play a role in how your seams will be set up when it comes to cloth. With this cube that I've subdivided, I'm just gonna select a few edges, just mark them sharp. And then if we press Q and we go under cloth and we begin the simulation, we see that this area has been pinned. So we can go in, roll our shrink to get exponentially more cloth, maybe reduce the pressure a little bit. We'll hold shift to bring it down a lot more gradually. We'll click on the restart button and just find our perfect value here. In fact, we could even click to stop it at this point and let's put a subdivision modifier in here. I like alt clicking subdivision because it will place it first in the modifier stack, which will mess up our cloth simulation. However, if we go back under cloth and we begin playing again, we can now play the simulation. However, it's a lot slower, a little too slow for my liking. So we'll just click to apply. Let's lower this down to one and we'll just jump back one more and we see that maybe there can be a pre subdivision cloth parameter added to the little modal floater. There's always more work to be done when it comes to these things, but it's always just a matter of testing and examination to show us those next steps that lie ahead. So now that we have something a little more optimal, I can just click on apply and I'll just press control tilde and we'll go under general options and just set this to smooth and we'll even slap a subdivision surface at the end of it just to really get it to looking like some well-defined cloth. 